Hello and welcome back to the Roads of Elden Ring. Today we are going to have a look at this fort, castle, whatever over here. And it just stopped raining. How nice. Um, we've seen this castle before when we um, explored this area over here, the Shadow Altus. Uh, specifically, we uh, we could have seen or we we have seen this one from the shadow tree, no, shadow view cross over here. Um, we could see it down to it, but today we're going to explore it. Man, the sky looks actually pretty nice right now. What about it? I was thinking like it would rain the whole episode, and now we actually got nice weather. Oh, strange. Right, before we go into this mysterious fort, castle, whatever, um, I don't know the name yet because on the map you can't see it right now. Um, but before we go inside, we need to have a look around. Because there are some interesting things around here, mainly to iron virgins over here and I think one of them is destroyed again right this is a normal one and then over here ugh. over here we have the headless one and the headless ones are much more dangerous but apparently there's a trigger somewhere for it to, for it to start roaming Right, on this platform here, or on this plateau, on this part of the castle, there's not really much to discover here. There's this one item, these two enemies, and from here, we can actually start to see an interesting detail of this castle, because if we have a look up here, we see nothing. We could have seen it from maybe closer. There we go. The golden rays and this very uh, undetailed sky over there. The sky box looks a bit um, washed out. So let's not look at this. But there's actually a set of grace inside the castle. Or on the back side. So let's see what this thing is called. And then let's have a look at the level design. Because this one is somewhat complex, even though it's fairly short. And I'm doing this on purpose now. Um, you will see in the next few weeks, I think, um, shorter episodes of shorter areas like this one. The next one will most likely be uh, this part over here, the, the small fort over here, or the appendix to, to the, to the, to Castle Ensis, this part here. And then, I don't know, maybe this village down here is something something. Because I don't have that much time right now. But I still want to upload. But let's go inside and see what's going on here. Fort of Reprimand. Is that how you pronounce that? Reprimand. That's how I would pronounce it. And we can see an omen killer. We have the... Omen killer roaming around and a bunch of hanged corpses and, and bones on the ground. Some broken runes. A wagon with cages on top of them. More cages to the sides. Most likely a prison fort for the... Probably the soldiers that were stationed here. That's what I would guess, because these, I don't know, do they look like, hmm, I'm not sure if these are Mesmer soldiers or not. 
I can't really tell. I don't know what the foot soldiers look like. Some bless bone shards. Throwing daggers. Uh, some useless stuff here. And one omen killer. The somewhat hidden part here is this little chute that goes down. And then the obvious path goes inside the castle or the fort. What I will do now is I'm walking through this area once. Is it just me or is it a bit too loud? For me it's a bit too loud. Let's oh yeah, let's reduce the volume a bit. Because I can't hear myself thinking right now. Like the music is extremely loud. Guess what? I'm just Nah. Let's get rid of the music. I don't I don't know, I'm not that I'm not a big fan of this this overworld music. Sounds kinda whack. Or it's getting it's getting um obnoxious at some point, right? Because it's oh, repetitive. Honestly, that's a better background sound. I'd rather have soothing rain than the music, so let's cut it out. But go inside, let's go inside. I will first now go through the level, and then at the end we will have a look at the castle and, and, and look at its Realism Ford, sorry. Um, but going inside, there are cages acting as walls for the player. And these are also the building blocks to make this area a bit more interesting. Because usually, if the path would have been clear, we could easily go to the other side. So. Let's see what these artificial walls have in store for us. There's a room inside. And here is nothing. Alright. So our only path is this torture chamber or torture room. Um, looks fairly cruel. The railing is broken down here, indicating that we are supposed to go down here without jumping over it. Of course, in Elden Ring we have the opportunity to jump over things, but if something is broken, it first of all tells possibly a story, right? Something broke through here. But it also tells the player that you can go down here. But before we do that, and of course there's a ladder over here, so I guess it's just storytelling. Or maybe the ladder, it's its somewhat hard to see the ladder, maybe. I can see how you can miss it. It's not that highlighted. Um, but because there's a ladder, I would actually go down here. And I guess there's a trigger. For these soldiers to through everything. Let's see what they're guarding. Smithing stone. So these are the same soldiers that were hung in the court. So I guess these are prisoners, maybe? Or these got imprisoned or hunted by the omen killer? Maybe. But then why do they have weapons? Maybe they broke free or something. Inside here, some more smithing stones. Not really worth the chest, to be honest, but whatever. Uh, let's get up and see what we can find inside. So far, this is the only way. And this is the small... This is on the opposite side of the small wall. Um, Makes it f makes it feel a bit more cohesive, right? The level, how the devs are leading you through this level. Imagine this would have been open. Then you have this room, and you would probably explore it, but 
it has a different feel to it, right? Currently, it's a bit more claustrophobic because like some paths are closed off. But imagine this wall of cages wouldn't be there. Then all of a sudden it feels much more open, this area. And I think that's one of the feelings they don't intend. Uh, they, they don't intend for the player to feel here. Um, probably another cookbook or something. Let's see, where's my lantern? Okay, it's in, in that slot. Right, because here this is easily missed. Uh, I mean, let's go back and have a look at the dead end. We can clearly see there is something here and we can even see a chest that's glowing up there. But then, if we go around to the spot where the staircase or something should be to get up there we can we, we see another wall um let's put this away there's actually a torch here but or, or a fire but in my opinion this fire should have been a bit more a bit brighter and we can hear the the thing outside rolling around but here we can actually jump on these cages where this torch is and then jump up here to this part and then we can grab this chest. What I have to say though, it's a bit weird that we have a ramp up here or a staircase that leads uh, nowhere. Like what is this place for, right? Um, but I wanted to do this layer, whatever. So let's go the only path that we can take right now. Another small ambush over here. And we're almost through the level. There are a few things missing still. If we want to grab this item, we're getting ambushed by an omen killer the second one so far and then if we go up here there is a side of grace on this side and now we're on top of the fort we have a few places to go we can go into this main part over here or we can continue up here which shouldn't be that big let's see what this is all made out of i've talked about this extensively in earlier episodes but this design of, of the wall with the hills and and, and what is it called? And valleys, right? The the crenellations, whatever it's called. Um, here you take cover, here you shoot. Um, it's kind of... the size is kind of wrong for a human, right? Because this is too tall. Uh, this is good, I guess, but, but, but this is still too tall. I can't shoot over here. I can throw over there, but I don't see... Where I'm th what I'm throwing at, right? And then we have the arrow slits that also work, but then why do we have the chronolations? I guess that we have the chronolations because it looks better, right? It's an aesthetic thing. You wouldn't really use these to shoot over if you're human sized, if you're a bit larger, like some other enemy types, for example, an omen killer. They're quite large, right? For these, I guess it could work. Let's see how large are these. He's standing on the rubber. Like still, they're extremely tall. I guess they wouldn't have any problems shooting over here. But then they can't really take cover over here. I mean, they have to crouch a bit. That's a bit silly. 
But what also is silly are these stupid platforms on the outside of the wall. I really hate this. I can't see where this is a beneficial for the defender. Right? I know that things like these exist where you store something like boulders or like rocks, boulders or um, a tree, whatever. Heavy stuff that you can drop on the enemy. Right? If they're getting close, you drop them. Like you cut some uh, ropes loose or whatever, or you burn them. And then it just collapses and, and falls onto the enemy. Uh, but these don't look like traps, right? This is this is not a trap. This is built inside this thing to be a somewhat stable platform. But it makes no sense. Let's say someone is attacking, first of all. Let's say this wall is completed, right? Uh, that it's not broken like this. First of all, you can't use the arrow slits because you would shoot against that wooden platform here. So you're actually defending the enemy. They can stand underneath without you being able to do anything. And if you're standing up here, you have no cover. Right? You're getting shot by arrows. So these platforms make absolutely no sense to me. If they make sense, uh, uh, let me know what you can do with them. Because I don't know. Because they don't look like these these wall traps. Here we have another trap. Dude throwing a firebomb at us. And then probably rushing at us. And then this is this part. Um, let's see. Can we get to the other side? We actually can. We still have this chute here. And then there was this mysterious um, side of grace on the other side. Let's see if we can get there from from here. Then we have the boss of this area, which is this dude. That's the boss. And then uh, we can't actually get to the... No, oh, that's too high. If we jump on these parts, we can probably... Uh, this has collision, right? Yeah, okay. Mm. Probably not while sprinting, even not while sprinting. There shouldn't be anything up there, but I want to see if I can... Uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's not. You're not supposed to get there. Uh, then we have this boss over here. Oh, I want to see something before we have a look at this room. Can we certainly get on top of this? But can we jump this gap? That looks really big. Probably not able to do that. Eh. Oh. Oh. I want to try this one more time. Because that was, that was some was, uh, some something. That was almost close. Oh, ah, for fuck's sake! Yeah, that was my last try. I promise. I bet you can do it. Like a basically air jump there. But what do we have here? The dining hall or something. Like we have a bunch of tables. Uh, a lot of weaponry. A kiln with... Oh! Nice! This one actually got a hole. If you remember back to the Stomville Castle times, I think there was no hole. So there was no actual chimney. Let's see what we have up here. I can probably jump down here and get to the other side. Oh, these are extremely high. They don't really want us to get there. 
do they? But there... There might be a way. Now this looks weird. I'll have a look at that in a short time. I want to see what's up here. I want to see what item is up here. Can probably get down there too. Kind of weird soundscape we have going on up. Oh my god, I have this one already. Very windy up here, apparently. Sadly, there is no flag or banner to show us how windy it is. And the clothing isn't really moving that much either. But it sounds very windy. But what are you supposed to do is, you can see the spirit spring down there, right? To the, to the right of the character. There's a spirit spring here, and then there's another spirit spring that we actually have activated when we had a look at this area down here. You go through the poison area, and then you can jump, jump. You can jump twice. And I can, you can actually see the ladder over there. Right on the on the side of that of that building. You can go up and then explore this lower part. So you can actually see well, the, the, this the left side of the wall. The what direction is this? South? The southern wall. But let's see, we can probably cheat the system a little bit. Even though the walls are very high, we have a bunch of objects here that we might be able to utilize. Yeah. Cheat the system. This should be survivable. No, we are actually at positions we are not supposed to be. Uh, we're not supposed to come from because if we go down here let's see if there is anything interesting here other than this ladder leading to this uh, graveyard i guess there doesn't seem to be anything of value here except this little entrance let's see where this one leads to oh whoops <laughs> this is the little shoot I'm doing everything out of order here, but this is the fun thing. Breaking out of the bounds of the game. I feel like this is always the fun thing. Uh, this is a weird... This is weird looking. You want to have this area protected as well, so you might want to raise the wall over here. So that you're not exposed. But I guess this angle is somewhat safe. And even if it's not this castle or this fort has a terrible position, I would I feel like. Imagine you're you're in this castle. And then your enemies can station themselves up on these uh, on these cliffs up here and you're fucked. They can easily besiege you. They have the high ground. So I don't know why they don't build this one in the wall or something. This is a terrible position. Only good if you're the one. Maybe you want to build an extra wall on these natural cliff formations and then you can expand this area. That would be nice. Make make this your, your main gate probably and then this whole area is safe. That should have been their move, I feel like. So let's see if we can cheat the system another time. Uh, yeah, another time is correct. First of all, I want to have a look at these weird walls, because these got raised so that it's not that easy for the player to do certain things. But I wonder if this gap is intentional. This gap feels so intentional, of course. They have just this one wall, and then they had to place the corner here because 
Well, that's how it works, right? You have to place your corners at certain points. And then over here, this is a bit further in the side. They could easily make it so, they could easily take this wall and move it a bit more to the, in, in this direction we're walking in. But I feel like these boxes and this gap is there for a reason. Because while these are destructible, you can also use them uh, as boxes where you can jump onto. If you're not jumping against them, then you won't destroy them. And now you can easily jump over here. And I feel like I'm... How do I do things? Nah. I should walk, okay. I should do it ju just like this. Now we're on the wall again and now it's raining again, of course. And this is one way of getting down here. They even placed this tent to grab our fall, to, to feather our fall, I guess. But another way of getting up here is um, with the spirit spring. This will lift you right up here. Interesting part is that they have a wooden platform here, so this you can technically take out this wooden wooden piece over here and put a ladder down there so you have access to the inside. This is something that I like. Right? The, the level itself doesn't exist, but they indicate more depth to this area. Right? By this closed off chute over here. Which is pretty nice. Just add more doors that a player can't go through and it might make more sense depending on where you actually place your fake doors like this one um, and then we have the side of grace another staircase over here and this is where the omen killer was stationed ambushing us and this is just another way of getting up here and if you think like, oh, these two sides of grace, they're very close together. Yes, they are. It's like they're, they have meme potential on how close they are. But they serve different, different purposes, right? This side of grace is very important because first of all, you have to come from down here in order to access this naturally right you have to come from here from the castle front go down here go through here or you come from the river cave and go this way both pos possible options and then you finally have your first side of grace after a long time right and if you're coming from this side we have a side of grace in front of the fort, and then in front of the boss. Right, this has been accessed by breakable boxes. If you break the boxes, you, I guess you have an, a few other chances of getting on the wall. But it's a bit more difficult, right? But now that we've seen almost everything, we can go down the chute the garbage disposal chute or corpse disposal disposal chute that I accidentally mm, entered in from another side. Can easily jump down here, grab this item, then end over here. And here we have also the final omen killer. No trigger? Oh, kinda disappointing. Some resin, some broken runes to grab the player's attention and then this dude to ambush. Yeah, this has sewer potential. Or I guess mass grave or... Uh, these are furnaces, right? To burn the corpses. Hack them up. And burn them. Kind of gruesome. Then here they have the graveyard. So they have different ways in this small area to access the boss, which is kind of nice. 
Like this is superb small level design. In this small fort where you would expect one path leading you through the entire area, you actually have three paths leading to the boss, which is amazing. You have the main entrance, then in the courtyard, ah, for fuck's sake, then in the courtyard you have the garbage disposal chute over there that you can use to end up at the boss door. You can use the, let's call it the main way, through there, through the innards of the fort, fight your way through and end up over there, the side of grace. Or you can take the an entirely different route, jump up the spirit springs and end up at the behind the fort of reprimand, reprimand uh, side of grace over here. And you can access the boss from this position. Which is amazing level design, honestly. Like the level design, that, that's, that's extremely good level design. Um, now to the fort itself, um, not that sure about the story. Uh, looked like, first of all, this looks like a uh, execution camp or whatever you want to call it, right? This is a fort where there's a lot of death. Uh, hung soldiers, but I'm not really sure on what side the omen killers are. Usually omen killers are on the side of um, the Golden Order, right? They hunt omen, bearing these gruesome weapons and the horns here to mock them. So I guess these are on the invader's side. Um, but then I'm not sure who these soldiers belong to. If these are soldiers of um, Mesmer, like the foot soldiers of Mesmer, or if these are like the Shadowlands soldiers. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, it would make more sense if these were the Shadowlands soldiers, but whatever. I mean, we have a captain here, so... If we have a look at the boss, I think it's it should be but feels somewhat obvious. But you never know with from software, right? Uh, but looking at this boss, this is clearly um, one of Mesmer's soldiers, so this is probably these are probably the corpses of the inhabitants of the Shadowlands. And they've probably used these abductor versions to bring more inhabitants over here to kill, right? That's what I would think. Borrowed from... Um, what's his name? Rikard. And the Rukusans. But yeah, we are through this level. We are through this whole area. And I must say I'm surprised. Now, while the the location of this fort is questionable, not very well, like the fort itself is surrounded by cliffs, but that feels more like a downside. If you're not defending the cliffs, these can be used to uh, against you very easily. You might have a choke point over here at the beginning, but if you're not protecting the cliffs, you're kind of out of luck, I would say. So I would expand on this place if this were a real place and I were the like the. the the dude who conquered or whatever built this thing here, I would definitely make sure that these cliffs can't be used against me. Because you can get up here with a spirit spring granted, but... Um, well, I guess normal people can't use spirit springs. But you can try to climb, climb on top of here, right? That's possible. And whatever, I would still secure them. 
But yeah, overall, I'm a bit surprised on how well designed this fort is. Of course, you can't get in these walls here and whatever. Right, there are arrow slits that are... And there's a small layout error, right? But there are arrow slits that lead to stone walls, so obviously indicating that you can get inside and whatnot, but uh, it's a video game, right? And they only have so many assets they can use. A uh, very gruesome story being told here. Um, awesome design, fun level design with the three paths in this small area, in this small fort. There are three, three different parts of getting to the boss. That is good design, even for a small fort like this. But yeah, let me know what you think about this area. For a small side dungeon, I would rate this actually pretty high compared to the main game forts. This is actually extremely well designed, not only from a uh, gameplay perspective, right? It's an awesome level, even though it's short, but for what it is, it's pretty good. Uh, but even from a world design, there are still a few errors. Oh, errors. Errors. Like, how are you supposed to get on this wall or over here, right? Um, and you can't really get into these towers, but... I mean, put a door there and it's fine. Put a door on each side of these towers on the, on the walls and it's fine. But then we still have these wooden platforms on the outside that I still don't know the purpose of like <laughs> like like that one over here these two makes no sense but i i kind of i'm kind of getting used to these by now <laughs> but again small thing that i didn't mention like we have a, we have a staircase leading up here very hard to get wagons in here and looking at this road, like you can definitely see two paths here, right? Left path and I guess middle and right path. So these are probably made by not, o not only people, but also by wagons. So I wonder how they push up these wagons, uh, push them up the stairs. Kind of uncomfortable, but whatever. Pretty cool design, pretty cool story um, for a small dungeon, pretty well designed. There's not much more that I can say. Let me know what you think about this area and I see you in the next episode. Goodbye!